Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and we got another tier list down the hole. We're diving in with the new Ant-Man Quantumania update uniforms, the new tier threes, the new tier fours, and then the most recently added Professor X and Kitty. Uh, and I gotta say, a lot of you are probably watching this video surprised that it's coming out so soon. I don't even have Professor X level 80, let alone tier four. I just tier three Kitty, but I think I have enough information and that sort of speaks to the quality of the updates lately uh, to already make a tier list. I'll, I'll make a separate video on this, but basically what I'm trying to say is that the updates lately have been shitty. And they've been shitty, in the not in the sense of like, you know, laziness on the, on the part of the devs uh, for, for one specific reason or another, but just that they have not added anything to the game lately in terms of content. Like they haven't added any content and they also haven't added characters to push the existing content. We've gotten some very small upgrades in specific areas, like for example, Shadow Shell being a small upgrade over Black Widow for ABL, et cetera, et cetera. Like we've gotten some very um, niche sort of upgrades, but nothing, nothing groundbreaking, nothing like, oh, this is clearly an improvement, right? Chasm wasn't an improvement for Speed Villain and that, so on and so forth. So yeah, I feel like this year has started off very slow for the meta department, which unfortunately makes these videos very easy and it makes the upgrades pretty clear cut in terms of what to skip and what to adopt and and sort of uh, aim towards so yeah let's jump into it here with the uh we're gonna first talk about the characters that i moved down we moved betsy down from the bottom of meta ish to the top of borderline pretty straightforward uh we also moved uh, proxima to the, from the bottom of of meta ish to lead support which i think is a sort of a fair assessment for her she's one of the best lead slash supports for villains but that's basically what she does nowadays same thing for robbie reyes moved him down a little bit we also moved captain marvel out of lead support to out of the meta i know she's still used for abx uh, abl leaderships uh for especially for universal female stuff but uh yeah it's a 30 it's a 30 percent lead it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things and it doesn't really deserve it, that alone doesn't deserve her being on this list of leads and supports so yeah i also moved cyclops down from meta ish to lead support really no surprise there uh, and that that about does it for the characters that moved now jumping into the new characters we start off with the biggest disappointment ever cassie technically technically she is a support character and I have some bad news uh, to, re to report that she's going to be the free artifact in the artifact, the personal artifact vault. Now, her artifact, unlike M'Baku's, does not provide any sort of, of buffs. So, whereas M'Baku is actually like a legitimately good lead support, which is why he's on the first line, um, Cassie is literally the worst excuse for a lead support. I honestly want to put her into Please Rework. I, I legitimately really feel like just dragging her to Please Rework. Uh, but she technically has a support buff, so I sort of have to do that. But her support buff is basically a shittier version of Echoes and without the leadership. So there's really no reason why you would ever use Cassie over Echo. Um, yeah, in, in any situation, which is pretty embarrassing for the devs to release a character that useless. Uh, I'm not really sure what they were aiming for there. Maybe they just hate Cassie. So yeah, they're mad that, that the uh, character got recast, that the actress got recast. Uh, and then for Wasp pretty decent character on her own but nothing groundbreaking you know the likes of Cersei Iceman um, not even pushing the needle for female blast heroes um, not cer certainly not able to keep up with uh, higher DPS monsters like Sharon Rogers despite having more survivability she does have the uh, HP buffs for a slight support so I was honestly contemplating putting her in the lead support category instead of putting her in the meta ish but yeah that, that's she'll basically in like a month or two when we get another speed type she'll basically get shifted over to the lead support uh position modok on the other hand slightly better and certainly rarer as a blast villain um honestly the best way to explain modok's value is that he is sort of a free to play or a cheap version of you know the characters that you're going to need for blast villain abx the mephistos the magnetos the superior iron mans etc does have the same cost as Superior Iron Man, but Superior Iron Man really isn't going to compete the way Iron Man Back to Basics does until you get him to at least 80, if not Tier 4. So, Modok is a good stopgap until then. He's got a decent leadership with the 45%, and then he's a pretty fun character to play. Very proc-friendly, So, and then he also has the flexibility being elemental to use a Judgment CTP. So, I like him. I don't think he brings a lot to the meta of the game, which is why I put him you know, in the middle of sort of meta-ish. But I do think he is fun 
and uh, you know worth a look if you need a blast villain and you don't want to invest in the Mephistos or the Magnetos of the game. Um, and then Ant-Man, basically the only character worth anything in the Ant-Man update. They at least got that right, but unfortunately Ant-Man suffers from, oh, you know what? I moved Black Widow down, so yeah. Ant-Man just suffers from this issue where uh, he isn't, I, you, you can't say he's meta because speed male heroes are not needed for any content in the game. They're not needed at a high level for much content. Um, he's still available for a lot of World Boss Legend stages, but even if you look at the high World Boss Legend stages, and I've been working on the World Boss Legend guide, none of the high stages are for, uh, bla or for uh, speed male heroes. They're all for either speed females or blast mutants or combats. There's nothing yet for speed males. That may change with Kang who I have cheekily put down there. Uh, if Kang gets a World Boss Legend, we don't know. That could honestly improve Ant-Man and Spider-Man's value, but currently that's kind of what's holding them back from being stronger uh, on top of the fact that speed female heroes have multiple days of ABX and ABL with which to shine. And that's why Shadow Shell takes over for these two guys here. Uh, I also dropped Black Widow down um, because of Shadow Shell. Shadow Shell is basically a better Black Widow, worse for ABX somehow, but as good or better for ABL and much better for World Boss Legend. So she's basically she basically just turns out to be a better Black Widow. For those of you that didn't uh, tier 4 Black Widow, honestly, she's not even that good for GBR. Um, you're much better off in almost any case uh, tier 4-ing Shadow Shell. That said, you'll still need someone to cover for ABX for you, which is a pretty bizarre thing to say, but... Yeah, that's, that's really why Black Widow's value got hurt. She was meta-defining, so was Shuri, but I dropped them both down just to be a bit more realistic. Honestly, the speed class is in a really weak place right now, and I don't see it getting better uh, for a long time. Like, there's not a lot of speed characters um, in the in the next, sort in, in the pipeline. I mean, th th there are, there are a few, but it's going to be a lot of repeats. So you have, let's say, Gamora for, um, for Guardians of the Galaxy 3, then you have things like maybe Spider-Gwen or maybe Miles Morales for his movie, and then maybe Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan for the Marvels. But that's it. So yeah, speed class, kind of weak in my opinion, and the tier fours for the speed class have honestly been way too niche. Like they made Spider-Man way too PvP focused in my opinion, and they sort of, they, they can't really figure out how to make speed types good. They're sort of suffering from a bit of what the, the combat class was suffering from, lack of identity. Um, a couple of years back, but yeah, that's how I that's how I sort of see that shaking out. Ant Man very proc friendly, very strong for uh, PVE content, but basically doesn't have much PVP value at all, and uh, like I said, suffers from a lack of necessity in game modes to make him better and to make him to to justify his ranking as meta defining. You can't say a character is meta defining if they're not needed for multiple game modes or if they're not one of the five best for PVP, that sort of thing, that type of thing. Honestly, you could argue that Spider-Man deserves to be a meta-defining because of his PvP value, um, but we'll leave him here for now. I don't want to overreact to that just because recently Jean Grey's been banned in PvP and stuff like that to let Spider-Man shine a little bit more. Um, and then for the mini update here, Kitty, uh, just, just yeah, so kind of sad. My, my review for her uh, as I'm recording this video is less than 24 hours uh, old, and I know people are already checking out mentally on Kitty. Just not good enough. Just not good enough. I mean, you could argue that she probably has similar DPS to someone like Gwenpool, um, Captain Falcon, Hawkeye, sure. But ultimately, I think people are just going to be using her as a lead support, right? There, there are just better speed types nowadays, right? And they're, they're certainly not only better speed types, but maybe speed types who are as good. Let, let's say, for example, I don't even know, but let's say Shuri is as good as Kitty. She, she might be better, to be honest. But the fact is that Shuri is so much more proc friendly, so much easier to play. All of this just hurts Kitty's stock so much, not to mention the fact that she's a premium character, so even just buying her uniform is not good enough. You then have to use a ticket to, to, to max out the uniform, whereas you can max out Shuri's uniform or Shadow Shell's uniform completely for free. There's just so many things hurting Kitty's value, and her damage does not compensate for that. Like She should be easily out DPSing Shuri based on the things that I just explained. She's harder to play and she's much more expensive to build. But the devs have their heads up their asses, so they don't understand that the, this is how the players see the game, and they think, oh, pirates, people will like that. Oh, mutants, people will like that, even if we make the character clearly worse than speed types that we've introduced in the last three months. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, she's sort of suffering from dev stupidity, and uh, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, kind of, it's kind of frustrating back-to-back to speed female heroes 
getting absolutely shafted. On, on the other hand, it kind of makes sense because they've been releasing so many strong female speed heroes. Um, it, it, you know, it, the, the power creep would be pretty insane otherwise if Cassie was better than Shuri. And then if Kitty was a little bit better than Cassie, you'd be looking at like tier, tier 4 level value from Kitty. But on the other hand, it's just kind of stupid. These characters should at least be equal to Shuri. Uh, there's no reason for them to be weaker, right? Especially considering Shuri has support buffs, right? <laughs> on top of everything else. But yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Professor X. A lot of the reactions to him right now are disappointment. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to tier for him anymore because of that disappointment. A lot of people are commenting on how he has no survivability. And he doesn't have, in some cases, enough damage to keep up with Magneto. So he's sort of like less damage than Magneto and similar survivability to Storm. And that really doesn't cut it. That combination of things doesn't cut it. You know, both Magneto and Storm definitely have their downsides, and both of them tend to have survivability issues. So it's sort of like the trifecta of Blast mutant heroes, or villains, I guess, but Blast mutant types who have bad survivability, Storm, Magneto, and um, Professor X. But on, on the other hand, right, Magneto is insanely good for ABX and ABL. Storm is insanely good for ABL, um, and they're both very good for War Boss Legend. If Professor X is not improving on that and he has all of the drawbacks there really is not any point to building him up because you have storm and magneto right there as i see it right now and of course my opinion is subject to change as i get more information but as i see it now professor x is a slightly downgraded version of either magneto or storm but with a more accessible uniform because you can buy it at any time whereas with storm and magneto you of course have to wait for the seasonal uniforms to come back in Storm's case, who knows? She may still be the best Blast Mutant female hero um, this summer. For Magneto, we're still like 10 months away from when you're going to buy his uniform next. So I think that's going to sway some people to get Professor X. I think they're trying to cash in on that, that FOMO that people missed out on Storm. They missed out on Magneto. So now they're going to build Professor X. But I don't think his performance, right, offensively and defensively, really justifies that right now. So... Yeah, can't really give him a better mark here than that. And I think he's going to be the first tier four that does not um, that, does, that does not get the um, the the meta defining treatment besides Spider Man and Ant Man uh, initially when they were released, right? Which uh, definitely is is saying something. Yeah, I, I really think the devs need to pay more attention to their updates. I really think they need to uh, do a little bit more QA, or maybe they can hire someone. I, I would be willing to do quality testing for them for free um, if they wanted to bring back the um, what's it called the the sort of uh, beta whatever it was called the the like early access shit that they used to do I would be more than willing to test the characters as long as they were willing to listen to feedback and actually you know change these characters buff these characters tweak them um, before launch but as it stands right now they're probably not making very much like they, this has probably been two of the worst months for them in a long time because of how lame the up like the updates have been you know the ant-man movie has not had enough support from the community and the the, the movie theaters are, are showing basically the same thing so i don't expect that they made much money on that and they honestly didn't make ant-man strong enough they didn't make him compelling enough as a pickup in the game neither did they do that for modok or wasp like they basically they basically dropped the ball on the ant-man update and we're all just waiting holding our breath hoping that kang salvages it and then the Professor X Kitty Pride update honestly is one of the worst updates we've ever seen in terms of the quality of these characters and how and how weak they are uh, for the current meta despite their cost, right? And then before that, they they really tried to bait us with Spider-Man and this like Spider-Verse update because they know that's the most popular shit ever, but they were just doing that to mask how boring and lame their Shadow Shell War Tiger update was. And that that encapsulates all of the updates this year, which is insane because they basically had four updates and three of them, 75% of the updates this year have been shit, have been lame, boring, unbalanced, weak, and, and worth a skip. Like all people say nowadays is this update's a skip, this update's a skip, this update's a skip. So yeah, hopefully they have better things on the way. Hopefully they take a look at some of these characters and they buff them because honestly, like, Professor X could easily get a buff. Kitty could easily get a buff. Cassie desperately needs a buff. Wasp could get a buff, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, in the meantime, the meta doesn't really change. Yeah, literally. Literally, look at the meta. It has not changed. So, yeah.
Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. I know I was a little harsh, but honestly, that's what the devs need. They need me to be harsh because they're not listening. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Smash the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.